guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel at Fix and Makeover. Today I'm joined by the best viewers, guys. I'm gonna be checking out Jordan Peterson instantly owns work professor on gender pronouns. Wow. I love Jordan Peterson. I understand and acknowledge his own point of view and I really I'm really inspired by him. So I really want to see this. So guys, stop further ado. Let's get started. You're allowing attention-seeking and somewhat narcissistic undergraduates to gain the upper hand over you in your class. You're talking around my question. I'm not saying I'd be correct. That's not the same thing at all. There's no damn way I was going to say those words when I was compelled to by law. I teach students. I teach trans students. And I'm asked often to call people singularly they. It started probably about four years ago. It struck me as very odd. I'm 52, and some of them, you can tell that it's coming from a very deep place, and that's how they feel, and they deeply need to be called they. Some of them, my horse sense says that they're kind of enjoying giving me a certain shock, and my general feeling has been, whatever they ask, just go with it, and let's change our usage of the pronouns, because we have a lot to do. Now, what you said was interesting. You said that the way that you make the difference in deciding these cases is based on the fact that you have psychological training and you can tell. What I want to know is, for my own elucidation and also because I think many of us wondered but then it kind of went by, how do you know? If you hear a tiny bit of skepticism in my voice, you're correct. Mm. However, I am open to being convinced. Mm. Based on your training, which yeah. is immense, how would you know which students to discount as opposed to which ones to go along with? Okay, well, first of all, I wouldn't know, right? Which is part, partly why your skepticism is justified. But I have to be responsible for what I say based on my willingness to take responsibility for my judgment. So I would be willing to do that despite the fact that I might be wrong. But having said that, in, in any reasonable situation, I would err on the side of addressing the person in the manner that they requested to be addressed, ad addressed. But that's not the issue for me. The issue is now I'm compelled by law to do so. It's like, no, not doing it, not now, because it's compelled by law. So that's the end of the game as far as I'm concerned. So, because there was no excuse for compelling it by law, I don't think it was an isolated legislative move. I think it's part and parcel of a whole sequence of legislative moves that have been made and that continue to be made in Canada. I think it's an attempt by a certain radical ideological, what would you say, a certain radical ideology to gain the linguistic upper hand, which I think is a terrible thing to do, to allow. So I had lots of reasons for rejecting the legislation, but it had nothing to do with it. We're talking about expertise here, and my ears pricked up when you talked about how there is a way of thinking that would allow us to decide. I know no, some of No, there's a way students. of thinking that would allow me to decide for me. No, us to decide for us. Surely you have a larger mission than just what's going on in your own head, and I mean that. No, I had a perfectly straightforward mission, which was there's no damn way I was going to say those words when I was compelled to by law. But that was my wanna, mission. You weren't trying to model for the rest of us a way of thinking it was really only about you? No, well, it was about me and the law. I thought the law, the lawmakers had gone too far. They'd stepped out of their appropriate territory into the domain of linguistic freedom. And as far as I was concerned, I was going to put up with that. And so if people were happy about that and wanted to follow the example, that was fine with them. But for me, it was something, and that, that was the statement. I'm not doing this. And then if people can draw their own conclusions from that, maybe they want to do it. I mean, and I've spoken with no shortage of trans people, and. You know, my proclivity has been without exception so far to address them in the manner that seems most socially appropriate under the circumstances. Now, you asked, I mean, you know, you asked a specific question, which was, do I have special expertise that I might share with, because with other people? you're doing Martin Luther, and I think that these issues are a little subtler than those. And so, well, what makes waiting. you what makes you think that you're doing the kids that are grandstanding any favors by going along with their manipulation? Because I can't decide which ones those are. Well, I just then, have my gut instincts well, and that's not good enough. Look, fair enough, but you have a type 1 and type 2 error problem. So one error is that you don't call students what they deserve to be called. 
That's one error. And the other error is that you, you call students what they want to be called even though they don't deserve it. And so what you're trying to do optimally is to minimize both those errors. And to do that, you have to take a middle route. Now what you've decided to do, and I'm not criticizing it, is you've decided to allow for the possibility 100% of one of those errors because you think it's a less significant error. And you know, you might be right, but it's not like you're acting in an error-free manner. You've just decided to minimize one form of error at the expense of the other. Because I would say you're allowing attention-seeking and somewhat narcissistic undergraduates to gain the upper hand over you in your class. Now, and I'm, that's, I'm, believe me, it's not is a it criticism. Just, it's not a it, criticism. I understand why no, you're doing it, it. it. Are you saying that psychological theory has nothing to teach us about this? Because you're talking around my question. You're gorgeously articulate. You're smarter than me. Does psychology have anything to teach us or not? Yes or no? I don't On think, this question. I don't think that it has anything to teach. I don't think it has anything to offer that I could teach you without hmm, let me think so it's that. just too complicated no no it's not no no it's not that well it is that in part because it's not easy to articulate out the principles the unerring principles by which you would make such a categorical judgment right because those are very situation specific problems you know and it's it's part of the problem of how of how to make a a generic moral truth applied to a very individualistic situation the, and the problem in the sorts of situations that you're describing is generally the devil's in the details, right? You have all these students, the ones that you just laid out, they vary in their attitude towards their, their self-professed gender from the ones who are grandstanding to some degree, let's say, to the ones that are very serious. And you have to make a judgment in the moment that is dependent on the variables that present themselves in a very complex way in that situation. And I understand why you you took the pathway that you took, and it's, it's perfectly reasonable to do so. My point was that you, you don't minimize all the errors by doing so. It's fine. It's, it's still a fine way of approaching. It isn't. My point was that because of my psychological acumen, I would say, that, that the experience that I've derived is that I would be comfortable in making the judgment and taking the consequential risk. I'm not saying I'd be correct. That's not the same thing at all. I'm willing to suffer the consequences of my error. That's not the same thing as being right. And so if I feel that a student is manipulating me, then I'm not going to go along with it. Now, I might be wrong about that and actually hurt someone who's genuinely asking for something that they need. But I'm also, what would you say, sensitive to the error of allowing manipulation to go unchecked. My friend. Kind of nice sensible. Um, Peter doesn't have his way of answering the question because he's talking about basically his own self he won't for everybody and he don't want to speak for everybody because it's very very good and smart of him speaking for his own self and i truly support him and me i'm going to speak for my own self too because because the students want you to call them by the pronoun they, ch they think they deserve or they think that's who they are does not mean it's it's not who you are seeing. Should I put the word like that? Like, I'm seeing you as a guy, dressed as a female, and I'll call you a guy, and you're upset. And sometimes it's not everyone that's, like, actually changed their dressing. Yeah. Well, you we can just be a guy, and I say, I'm not okay. binary, address me. As a female. Then... Yeah, so, for me, the, the best... It's not what you want me to call you as. I call you as what I, I see think, you as. Why don't you just and call them their names. That is exactly, the, that, just exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. Just call them by their names. It saves you from all those yeah. drama. Hey, if you have like 20 students in the class, I don't think it would be difficult to learn everybody. You know, you know some, some people would change their name probably by, let me see, they, they answering a guy name before. They will choose to be calling their name. If you as mean, long as that's the name of your name. And that's the name you give us that, a school. That is, that is the best way to I'm avoid to avoid those dramas. Because the day them like life is so complicated. We don't need to make it any more complicated than forcing people to say pronouns that 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 wasn't taught in English because they them is for plural. So instead of all these complications or arguments, just Call the person by their name. What is your name? You know, you know, this when the complication comes in more is when they are little. Nick? Because 
like little like MC kids now. When uh, let me see, six, seven, eight, nine. When they are teaching them, let her speak. You get. At so, this age, I don't think those children have any problem. This is some parents. Some, some some parents like to enforce that thing for the. They should do it in their house. <laughs> for the teachers to be calling them by those see? names. So, where I come from, I believe life life is simple. Like, see, there's a lot of stress in this whole universe, and making adding gender into it is just complicated. There was this lady that went to the hospital and they told her to fill in her name and her, you see when they asked parents, mother or father for the children, for her kids that she brought. Then she wrote parents. She didn't specify if she's a mother or if she's a father. So the nurse was just like, please, just write mother because she was very like, mm-hmm. Then she was like, I'm non-binary. I'm not going to identify as what I'm not. Then the nurse just gave her a side eye. Then she came online and she was complaining about it. Why did the nurse give her a side eye? To me, I felt like the nurse was just like, this woman is just trying to make my work miserable and make it. Because if you're trying to call, you'll be like, parents, 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 who is a parent here? Like literally everyone there is a parent. So that's, yeah, they show like the nurse is trying to make things complicated for her. Um, I'm not saying that you're wrong or anything. I'm just saying that you're making this complicated for everybody. Because... If you look at it, I don't know. I don't know how you guys want to be identified. Because parent is like, if you search the meaning of parent is either a mother or a father or parent. I don't know how I want to say this. So if you're using to identify as a parent instead of being a mother or a father, or like if she says she wants to identify as a father, it's not going to be easier. I don't know. I don't know. You say how it's complicated. I'm over confused. Trying to confuse everybody. Those people are delusional. Confused. Talking about it, I'm confused. So I don't know. I don't know what everybody's feeling. But there's one thing I know is that you cannot stand up and speak and no one will be offended. No matter how much you want to be nice and unbiased, there's no way you're going to stand up in a crowd full of 10, 20, 50, 100 people and speak and no one will be offended. Even in church, when the pastor preach and say something, one or two people may be triggered. Even in the mugs, when the imam preaches or says things about the Quran, one or two people may be triggered. He said, life, life is not easy. And at the end of the day, we're looking out for ourselves and our feelings. But if someone is not physically harming you or bullying you or degrading you, I feel that Personal speech and the personal um, idea is their business. Because recently, people are calling women um, biological. See, the woman explaining the fact I'm a human. Biological um, human, uh, human, they are calling them cis women. Like, when I heard that, like, damn, I was so triggered. I was so pissed. Like, imagine you're calling me a cis woman. Like, what have you to calling me a woman? And now I'm being called a cis woman. I was pissed. I was upset. But, like, literally, what am I going to do? Am I going to come online and be like, don't ever call me that? Like, that's your business. You're the one saying it. I know I'm a woman. If you choose to add sis behind it, that, that's on you. I don't really care. Or you call me a betting person or a, um, I don't know what they call it. Even when you're betting, there's something they call it. Or you say they're not called the woman. Um, they're not called mothers. They should change it to something else to favor all those people that can't give birth, like um, transgender men that can't give. I'm like, okay. Do you? If that makes you feel better, then do you? On a normal day, I don't really care. Or I'm not really offended because it does not make me annoying. You ain't really pissed me off for that system. Man. Like, and the way they were just saying it was so, so funny. And that's it. There's no way someone would talk and you don't feel offended. I'm pretty sure my video may upset one or two people or more than. But we are all humans and we all offend people and we all make mistakes. But this this is not a mistake though. But it may trigger you, it may make you offended. But that's how life is. So guys, let us know what you think about our reaction. Please venture to like, subscribe, and share our videos. See you in the next one.